So this video is going to be about how to identify point groups of molecules, which is a subject we need to do for molecules that have some symmetry to them. So I'm going to start off with an example right here, which is eclipsed ethane. And so uh, in the flow chart, the first question asks, is this linear? So I would say this is pretty crooked, so it's not linear. So the next question becomes, is it one of the high symmetry objects like uh, a tetrahedron or buckyball or a cube? And the answer is no. Okay, and so the next thing you need to look for is a high order axis. Okay, and so you can see that this guy has a threefold rotation axis. You can rotate it three times to get it back to the original position. Okay, so that is called a C3 axis. Okay, so we're going to do a Newman projection of ethane. And so the C3 axis is sometimes denoted by a little triangle, since a triangle also has a threefold rotation axis. All right, so if you have an axis that has a high order, like this one, and uh, you, even if you have other axes, if you have one that's higher than all the rest, it's called a principal axis. And the notation for principal axis is capital letter C, and then subscript tells you how many times it rotates before you come back to the original position. So ethane, when it's eclipsed, has a C3 rotation axis. You rotate three times and uh, come back to the original. Now the other thing is the rotation angle is 360 degrees divided by the number of times you rotate. So this is 120 degree rotation. Okay, so we've identified a principal axis. There is no other C3 axis in this molecule. However, the flow chart asks, all right, well, let's look for some other, uh, other axes of rotation. And there is one right here. So we can take the molecule and rotate it about a vertical axis and get the same molecule back. And since we rotate it two times, that will be a C2 axis. So between these eclipsed hydrogens, there is a C2 rotation axis. All right, and so However, the flowchart has a rather complicated bunch of words. It says, if you can find one C2 that's perpendicular to the original C3, there must be two others that you can't see, or, but you know they must be there. So there's going to be three C2 axes which are perpendicular to the <coughs> C3, the principal axis. Okay, so next... In the flow chart, it, it asks you various questions about uh, do you see some, a horizontal plane? And there is a horizontal plane in ethane. If you take and look at it from the side, it has a mirror plane right here, perpendicular to the C3 axis. All right, and then it also has vertical planes here. There's three of them. And so we're just gonna make a list of all the axes and planes that we have. 1 sigma h, and that's perpendicular to the C3, and I'll have three sigma v's, which are perpendicular, or parallel, sorry, parallel to the C3 axis. All right, so parallel to the C3. Okay, and then there's various other symmetry elements. So the flow chart doesn't necessarily have you identify every one of these as you go through. So for example, you only identify one of the sigma v's or maybe doesn't even mention it. But down by the time you get down to the end of the flow chart, you will get uh, the identification of this point group is D3H, okay? So the D refers to the fact that you have a principal axis and then some perpendicular C2's. So that's what the capital D stands for. The three stands for the principal axis order. And the H refers to the fact you have a horizontal plane that's perpendicular to the C3 axis. All right, so that's the name of this. Okay, and we're gonna take a little break and actually put the character table for D3H up here. All right, so now we'll resume. 
Okay, so we have identified the point group as D3H for eclipsed ethane. So um, let's look at something called a character table, and it'll tell us some information about actually what symmetry elements are in the molecule. So E refers to a necessary element in order to have group multiplication by one. It's called the identity. That means don't do anything. And so there's always this in the character table because there's always the operation don't do anything. Then there's a column that says 2C3. That's the rotations by 120 degrees and 240 degrees. All right, and so there is one axis. There's two rotations. All right, so th this is what you have to be careful of if you have a C3 or higher axis. There's more rotations than there are um, axes. All right, now this 3C2 refers to the fact that we have found three C2 axes. Now the C2 rotation is only 180 degrees. Rotate again and we're back to the original. All right, so that's actually three axes and there's one rotation for each axis. Sigma H, there's only one of them, and that's the horizontal plane that cuts the molecule in half. And then there are two S3 axes. S3 is a type of rotation we haven't mentioned yet. It means rotate and then reflect. And since a molecule has a principal axis and a sigma H, it automatically has an improper axis of rotation. It's actually possible to have an improper axis of rotation without having these individually. Uh, and then finally, the three vertical planes that we identified are mentioned in the, period, uh, in the character table. One, two, three. Okay, so let's talk some more about what's in the character table. So, um, characters. That's why it's called a character table. So, uh, I'll explain in another video exactly what a character is about, but there's a few other things in here that might be useful. Um, there's X, Y, and Z, and then there's things like uh, X squared minus Y squared, X, Y, X, Z, Y, Z, X squared plus Y, Z uh, squared, or Z squared. Okay, these are related to the D orbitals. Now, the D orbital has to actually be in the center of the molecule in order for you to use the character table to identify what kind of label should be attached to the D orbitals. And if you have two in a parenthesis, that means you have a degenerate set of two, which of course is always true for an uh, irrep, irreducible representation called E. All right, um, so there's the doubly degenerate set, doubly degenerate set uh, for the E's, singly degenerate for the A's with various labels on them. Okay, so, um, the headings on the table tell us, oh, first of all, I want to mention there is one S3 axis, two rotations here. Okay, that's what this two is referring to. It's the two rotations that goes with that one axis. So, it turns out that when you count all the numbers of operations, you get something called the order of the group. And so, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. There are twelve operations in the D3H point group, so it's called a, the order of twelve. Uh, the other thing about a character table is really twelve columns. Uh, but the column for the C3 at 120 degrees and 240 degrees is really the same set of numbers, so they don't write it twice. They just put a two up front and say, hey, just write this twice if you have to. Same goes for this column here. All of the uh, C2 axes rotations, turns out they all have the same numbers for the characters, and so instead of writing that three times, they just say, hey, it's the same set of numbers, it just happens three times. Okay, so these are very important numbers to recognize uh, when you're looking at the number of total operations for the group. All right, I believe that's... All right, so the last topic I want to talk about is what happens when ethane becomes e 
not eclipsed, staggered. And uh, so we go through the flow chart again. It's not linear still. It still has a principal axis, a C3, so we can rotate it 120 degrees a couple of times, 120, 240. And it still has a two perpendic uh, three perpendicular C2 axes. However, it's much harder to see in the staggered ethane. The C2 axis is between the two CH bonds that look like they're at a uh, 60 degree angle. Okay, so it's right between them. So I'm going to try to do this rotation about a vertical axis and see if it comes back to the way it used to be. All right, and there's three of them. Uh, and so there is no horizontal plane because the front half does not look like the back half anymore. And so um, when you look at the hydrogens here, instead of being across from each other, they are anti and uh, gauche to each other. So there is no sigma H. And so you go through the uh, flow chart. And so staggered ethane is D3D. So instead of D3H, it's D3D. So this happens with all eclipsed and staggered compounds. So uh, if they're eclipsed, you, you'll wind up with something like D3H. If they're staggered, you wind up with something like D3D. So, all right. Now, end of video.